Hello and welcome to Model Engineering for Beginners. This is part 13, fitting a quick change tool post to a Boxford lathe. On my Boxford lathe, I've always used this tool post and I've really got away with it because when it's in this position, there's a nice parting tool sticking out of the side of it, all ready to just cut my hand to ribbons. And the other problem with using this type of tool post is that you generally have to pack the tool underneath to get it to the correct centre height. On the larger of my tool lathes, the Smart and Brown 1024, I have a proper Dixon tool post. This was a very expensive piece of equipment. So rather than risk potential injury in the future, I wanted to fit a quick change tool post to the Boxford. So I bought this. This came from a company called Kronos, and it was advertised on the internet. And when I looked at it, it looked okay. It comes with a nice handle, it comes with three tool holders and the central unit that fits to the lathe. Upon first inspection it looks okay. So here I'm unboxing it because people like to see things unboxed for some reason. The middle bit's quite heavy, I wouldn't want to drop this on my foot. And just to lower the risk of that I'm going to remove all the oil that the things are covered in. The components are coated in this oil just to prevent rusting. And this oil is doing a very good job because there's no rust at all on any of the parts. So the first impression of this product is good. Nicely made with no sharp edges and no rust. So after cleaning the tool post parts, I thought I would treat the lathe to a bit of a spring clean. Only a slight spring clean on the top part though. So now the top part of the lathe is looking a little bit cleaner. It's time to remove the old tool post. The first thing I found after taking the handle off was a circlip, so I removed that first with a pair of circlip pliers, and suddenly the old tool post seemed to spin very freely. So using my trusty Barco spanner, I undid the central shaft, which is attached to a large T-nut that secures the entire tool post to the cross slide. And once the central shaft was unscrewed, I could lift off the entire tool post. I must confess that I've never removed this type of tool post before, and I was quite surprised to find this bearing thing underneath. This bearing had a rubber o-ring around the outside edge, obviously to stop the ingression of swarf and dirt and other particles, but the o-ring is not doing a very good job of preventing this happening. I removed the entire bearing and put it in a plastic bag for safekeeping, so if I need to use it again I can do. And then I put the new tool post on the cross slide, only to find out that the central shaft did not fit in the cross slide. So what to do I asked myself. I do have another lathe, so I could reduce the diameter of this to fit down the centre of the new part. But initially I thought, don't be silly, just go out and buy another half inch Whitworth bolt, and then just sleeve the half inch bolt to make it a snug fit in the tool post. So I contemplated going out and buying one of these bolts from a local supplier, but before I did that, I cleaned some more swarf residue from the cross slide. The T-nut is a nice easy fit in the slot, so there's no problem there. Back over to the bench, and it's time to remove all these oily components from the plastic bags, and wipe off the oil with the cloth. Luckily where I live, it's in the heart of an industrial area, and so it's a simple job to go down to a company called BD Bolts, and buy myself a half inch Whitworth bolt. But I thought, first of all, I'll get rid of all this oil, and then I'll fit the tools and see how everything goes together. The first tool that I fitted to the holder is a small parting tool. I've had this for quite a long time, and it's very useful for cutting grooves in pistons to take O-rings. You can just nibble away at the piston groove until you get it just right for a specific O-ring. So now the parting tool is clamped into the holder, the holder in turn clamps to the main tool post and by rotating this knurled adjusting collar you can alter the position of the holder relative to the tool post higher or lower. What this means is that you can get an accurate centre height for the cutting tool and then once you get the centre height perfect you can tighten the top allen bolt which locks this knurled adjuster in place. And then, every time you fit the tool which is in the holder to the tool post, it is always in exactly the same position. So if, for instance, I remove the parting tool, and then fit the knife tool, 
This too can be adjusted to be at perfect centre height. Once the Allen screw at the top locks the whole assembly, every time you remove it from the tool post and refit it, it's in exactly the same position. As this tool post came with three holders, I have one for the parting tool, one for the knife tool, and one also for a boring tool. This fits on the other side of the tool post. That's why there are two of these fittings. So I went down to my local bolt supplier, only to be told, Whitworth, we don't do anything like that anymore, and you wouldn't believe how expensive they are, etc, etc. So they didn't have one. I thought, well, I've no choice here. What I'll do is turn down the existing part to fit. And once the tool post is bolted securely to the cross slide, it's time to fit the first of the holders, which has the knife tool in it. Then I'm going to set the position of the tool holder so that the cutting tool is precisely on the centre line of the work. What I could do is remove the chuck and put a centre in the spindle and line it up that way, but I find it easier just to have a test cut and then a quick adjustment. Here is an observation. When the tool is precisely at centre height, you will feel that it's cutting very freely. If it's above centre height, you will have to put more pressure on it to move it across the work, and when it gets to the middle, you'll probably break the tip off the tool, so be very careful. As you can see here, there's still a slight pip, so take another cut a little bit deeper and see what happens. And on this pass, it cuts very freely and doesn't leave a pip in the centre. Once the knife tool is perfectly on the centre line of the work, all you have to do is simply lock the adjuster in place with the allen bolt. To save wear and tear and effort, you will notice that I've changed the piece of steel for a piece of brass to set up the parting tool, mainly because brass is far easier to part off and takes a lot less time. The same rules do apply though as with the knife tool on the piece of steel. If you find you're having to put excessive pressure on the tool to force it through the work, then it's too high. If on the other hand, it goes through the work very smoothly, but then leaves the work attached as it comes through the other side, it's too low. It has to be precisely in the right place so that it goes exactly through the middle of the work and parts it off cleanly. And once the centre height is set, before removing the tool, don't forget to tighten the allen bolt at the top to make sure that it never moves. To align the boring tool, I need to turn something from the inside out. So I found a piece of scrap brass, I fitted it in the chuck, and I didn't bother aligning it because it's not important. I got the centre height on the boring tool, and here you see it's cutting very well. This is how I fitted my quick release tool post to my old Boxford lathe. And I'm quite pleased with Kronos Engineering as a company. The delivery was quick and the part is certainly very nicely made. And as far as machine tool parts go, this was relatively inexpensive. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.